job he's done in a backup car as he battles side by side with Edwards into turn three, four, whoa, six. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There he goes. And around he goes. He and Carl got together. Oh, yellow is out. Yellow is out. Just uh, slipped up the hill a little bit. Carl yeah, I got, got him. Got him. What does that caution flag do for our strategy? Well, every caution lap you run helps because it's roughly a two to one ratio. Two caution laps to one green flag lap. So all these drivers that are marginal, they love every caution lap they can get right here. This is a great learning experience for fuel injection and the EFI and that brain in the car. These guys are gonna learn so much about how to increase their gas mileage, how to milk it right here today. Ryan Newman was sixth on the outside of Carl Edwards when they made contact at turn four. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson in that 48, he just went by both of them. And here's a look from the blimp, top of your screen, entering turn three. Yeah, just side by side, the hard to stay down on the bottom. Carl gets a little wiggle, and uh, then the 39 car, Newman on the outside, they made a little contact, and around he went. Boy, Jimmy Johnson and Regan Smith scooted through on the inside. One of the hardest things to do on any racetrack we go to is go in a corner side by side with another car because this is what happens so many times. You know, lead lap. See any damage on the right front fender of Carl? It looks it's crinkled, wrinkled a little bit. And Jeff Hammond had uh, quite a viewpoint on that one. Yes, I did, Mike. We just got here just outside of turn four, watching the cars come through on the restart, and everybody's just pushing and shoving, and all of a sudden, we saw the 39 car go around, covered in tire smoke, everybody here watching the race, and this part of the racetrack, because it's getting so slick, we talked about it all day, all day long, everything is happening here. You see the guys, you hear them picking the throttle up and really starting to get really aggressive late in the race. It's right now, it's, it's go time. You can really feel it here off of turn four. I tell you something else, I don't like that fender on that 99 car either, Jeff. That thing is all wrinkled up and down on the tire. There's uh, Jeff Hammond making his arrival. Just as uh, Ryan Newman made his arrival with the turn. 52 laps to go when they come to the line. We're back under green. Keselowski's led three laps so far today. He could be about to lead his fourth. Boy, he overdrove that corner, oh, though. No. All the way, almost up against the wall. Dirty, Hamlin. Dirty tires got in there too hot. Probably a little state drive over there, maybe, from the accident, or at least dirt on the track. Keselowski's best finish here, 15th in this race last year. And he goes from the lead back to sixth. Here's how it happened. Oh, you can just see how hard, how much harder he drove in the corner than Denny Hamlin in 11. Did you saw that gap open a little bit? Just overdrove it a tad. So Hamlin is the leader. Biffle is second, trying to hold off Harvick. Then Ambrose settles into fourth ahead of Johnson. We got a ways to go, but this would be such great redemption for that 11 car because I feel like here two years ago, that's what this racetrack bit them on fuel mileage, cost him a win, and he eventually lost the championship. And Krista, here comes Harvick. He's up into second place. And the big question, Mike, how much did he save? Crew Chief Shane Wilson came on the radio and said, we needed both of those cautions. We are only one lap to the good, and it's a good thing because Kevin can't say now. He's in a dogfight. He has to race. And I feel that's the case with all these drivers. It was marginal. The number of cautions we've run should be pretty good now. Yeah, because we're talking nine laps. I mean, that's two gallon of fuel, Larry. I, I, that's a lot of, that's a lot to ask. And Marcus Ambrose is slow in the back straightaway. His great third place run is going to come undone. Well, it's a hot afternoon here in the desert. And uh, if you're going to have problems, you're going to have them late here in the race. Uh, Jeff Burton has taken his car to pit road. Engine, I hear it go by and it just hurt it. You can see it. 18 laps from the finish line. Smoke billows. Yeah, we're engine number nine. We're seeing the same. Out there. 
I don't think so, buddy. Now we were seeing the same thing there that we saw on McMurray's engine in the one smoke coming out the right side exhaust pipe. They Five just quit. Five miles to go. You need about one gallon of that Sunoco Green E15 to make it to the flag. Yeah, these drivers get about 4.2, 4.3 miles to the gallon. And Harvick is closing. <laughs> he, Imagine he, that. He Half he a drives. second. He drives off in the corner 10 times further than Denny Hamlin does, but Denny is better off the corner. A.J. Allmendinger just ahead of them, 19th last car on the lead lap. You can see Kevin Harvick. We're down, man. You got him. You'll get him. He's starting to move that car around a little bit. He tried a little different arc through one and two that last Yeah, year. he tried to get the car. He ran a little bit higher, hoping there'd be a little speed up there. I don't believe it really is. Right now, it's just staying pretty, pretty, pretty much the same gap. Harvick's running out of time. Four laps to go. He is 44 one hundredths of a second behind Hamlin, who works under Allmendinger. Oh, Allmendinger is definitely slowing down Hamlin a little bit. That's going to allow Harvick to gain some down that back right here. Harvick picks up a tenth. He got him. He gained a bunch right there. All right, he's got two to go here. Let's get him. One car length, and the closer is there, knocking on the door. I tell you, if he if he doesn't run out of gas. Two to go. You get him. Come on, man. Up on that wheel. I love it. Get up on that wheel. And look at Kevin Harvick drove that thing down in there. It's almost like he's found a little something down there in one and two. Loses it off of two. This loss. Uh oh. oh he's out he's He's out of fuel. We knew it was going to be close. Denny Hamlin will get the white flag this time. Carl Edwards is out of gas. White flag for Hamlin. Can he make it one more mile? One, one lap short for the 29. Watch for others. <laughs> Seventy-eight out over on the back over there. Harvick still second. Three seconds back. Hamlin with a three-second lead and eight seconds up on Greg Biffle. Hamlin's home free. And for his 18th career win, Denny Hamlin delivers. Checkered flag in Phoenix. Harvey's going to hang on for second. How about Comes that? Harvick, 5.8 back. He makes it to the line just ahead of Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, and Brad Keselowski. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, 6th and 7th. Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Joey Logano, the top ten. Woo! <laughs> That's a nail biter, boys. <laughs> well, the closer got to the door and it would not open. I tell you, I, it's probably a good thing he I ran out of fuel for Denny Hamlin's sake. Look at this. Good team meeting right there. And how about champion crew chief of 2011, Darian Grubb, picking up just about where he left off at the end of last season with Tony Stewart. Yes, sir. Headed for the winner, sir. So happy for Darian Grubb. Yes, they didn't even know if they were going to make the chase. He was told halfway through the chase he will not be returning to Stuart Haas. Still kept his head down and won those five races and won the championship. Joe Gibbs got him a jewel right there, buddy. Hamlin led three times for 61 laps, including the final 59 circuits. Out of gas. Um, yeah, he could be out of gas. <laughs> out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a push to the station, please? Brad Keselowski in the two that finished fourth. He was out of fuel. Martin Trix Jr. had to push him to pit road. I don't think this crew would mind pushing this 11 car, though. No, I got him. He reset his. He got. He reset his. He's good to go. And that takes us back to what happened to Tony Stewart when he shut his car off. We are told that he tripped the relay on the electronic engine management system, and that requires a reset process. He did get the car running again. Wound up two laps down. But here is the driver that's headed for victory lane. And Mike, I think that uh, Denny Hamlin has had his uh, hit the reset button too. This guy's going to be hard to deal with. And that's a car, Denny Hamlin. The celebrating continues. He won one race last year after eight the previous year when the championship slipped away from him after the Phoenix race. But he's in victory lane celebrating now. And our Steve Burns is down there with him.
Well, Denny Hamlin, congratulations. I heard you tell your new crew chief, Darian Grubb, thank you for making me competitive again. Last year was a long year, but you're off to a great start. How'd you do it? Man, it's, um, if you would ask me at the beginning of the day, I said I would have took a top 15 finish. Um, just an amazing job by this FedEx office uh, team. It's just, uh, he just kept working on it. And, and, and every time he worked on it, it got better. And uh, can't thank them enough. And my, you know, this win is for uh, Johnny Farino. He, he lost his dad. He's one of our head mechanics. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with him. He lost his dad yesterday. And, uh, you know, we're thinking about him. This is, uh, he told me before he left that uh, only a trophy will do. And uh, we're going to bring it back home to him. So thank them. I've got to thank everyone from FedEx, uh, Toyota, Sprint. Uh, FedEx has been great. Uh, Nike, everyone at the Jordan brand, thank you. Um, Coke, Wiley X, and the fans. Gosh, it feels good. Uh, someone asked me uh, in the FedEx suite, one of the employees asked me earlier today, they said, uh, do you know where Victory Lane's at here? I said, I don't know, but they can point me to it after the race. Denny, how important is this win for you and for this 11 team with a new crew chief, Darian Grubb? Huge momentum. I mean, we've never been in this position this early in the season. We've always uh, struggled. We've always taken our time, you know, five, six races in before we hit our stride. But uh, this is particularly not my type of racetrack, new pavement. I'm, I'm usually better at saving tires, but uh, uh, he made me a winner today. Enjoy the victory. Thank you. Chris. Thanks, Steve. Denny led the most laps at the Daytona 500, wound up fourth, but he's your points leader after two races. First time for him since two years ago, late in the year in Phoenix as he continues to celebrate with his new crew chief. Now the closer Kevin Harvick was closing in but ran out of fuel and for Kevin Harvick who led the most laps today 88 a tough finish Chris Devote is standing by. Kevin Harvick had to save a whole lot of fuel and then stalk his prey in the end just one lap short you're still able to have a smile what did you learn today I have a feeling there's a big picture in this. Well you know just obviously we finished in second racing for a win in a place we ran you know, 25th or 30th, whatever we ran here last year, and just uh, was really nervous coming here about how we were going to run. Just want to thank everybody from Reem, Jimmy Johns, Budweiser, Chevrolet, everybody, Hunt Brothers, uh, that, that helps keep this car on the racetrack, everybody from Ollie's, uh, and all these guys. Uh, you cut the fuel lines that close, uh, you're, you're figuring it right. So they proud of all my guys, and to come to a place like this where we struggle so much and, and race for a win is hopefully what sets the tone for the year. Thanks, Kevin. Exciting day here in Phoenix. A lot of guys on different strategies. How concerned were you about fuel, Jimmy? We were concerned because I, I rarely get good fuel mileage. So, um, you know, we were definitely concerned. And once we uh, cleared the two, and we just kind of fell into a rhythm at that point and, and tried to make sure that we got home and got some points. Uh, leaving Daytona 42nd on the board wasn't, uh, it wasn't a good way to start the season. But very proud of the effort. We had a very, very fast Cobalt Tool Chevrolet. Um, unfortunately, a little hiccup on pit road. Um, you know, kept us from really racing for the win, but we still fought back and got into it. So uh, very proud of the effort, very proud of our race team. Patented day for the 48 team. Nice recovery from Daytona. And Denny Hamlin with the victory in Phoenix as we check the unofficial results. A guy who has leaned on Michael Jordan, spoke to him about advice on being a champion. Of course, his Super Bowl head coach, Joe Gibbs, who's also his team owner, who's won championships in NASCAR. He's even gone to a sports psychologist to sort things out, guys, after uh, letting that championship slip away, maybe back in the pictures. We go up to Larry, Darrell, and Mike. And DW, if you're into numbers, and I know you are, number 11, the car number 11 tied for all-time wins, 198 with the 43 uh, number. And, of course, uh, Denny Hamlin, a number that you had, Cale Yarborough, number 11, the winner today. Yeah, pretty excited. 17 last week, 11 this week. So that, <laughs> that kind of works for me. But Hamlin is re-energized. I saw it at Daytona. They saw him aggressive at Daytona. He comes here in the day. He gets the win. That team is going to be on the road. That's a championship crew chief, by the way. Yeah, I really believe Joe Gibbs Racing is re-energized. They have that new engine program in place with TRD. Three drivers in the top ten. Of course, Denny Hamlin, after two races, he's our points leader. What a wild finish here in Phoenix. Questions about electronic engine management. And by the way, all those suggestions I had for a new name for the backstretch, the one I liked best was a town close to here, Gila Bend. Now, Tony Stewart was one of those drivers who had problems with the electronic engine management system today. Let's hear from him. Well, your, your thoughts on, on what happened to you today? Uh, I mean, I just shut the car off like we did at Daytona to save fuel and turn it back on, and it never refired. So I, that's all I can tell you. I don't know why it didn't refire. Um, I honestly don't know. I mean, it's not my department. <laughs> but um, 
you know, I just turned the switch back on and it never refired. So uh, I don't know why that was, but um, it definitely cost us a good day. Same thing happened to Joey Logano at Daytona, and the engineers have the computers plugged into this car already.